Okay, so Pi News episode 69, and I've been playing around with Windows on my Raspberry Pi 4 because the Amazon App Store, uh, which allows you to install Android apps on a Windows 11 device, has come to the UK for the first time. But uh, I've tried it, and I tried all the different tips. Uh, it says it will not work on your device. I tried enabling all sorts of things in Windows, and unfortunately it hasn't worked for me. I did end up spending quite a lot of time on it. I was trying to use the WR Flasher, uh, which is available from Pi Apps, which is a brilliant tool. But every time I installed with that, it didn't give me the Windows Store icon. Uh, and so I couldn't, I didn't have access to the Windows Store for downloading games and apps. Uh, I don't know why that is, but in the end, I went back to the original method I always used to use, which is the WR project uh, on the website and, and downloading it all manually, which is a lot more work but it did give me the Windows App Store, but I couldn't get Amazon to work. Anyway, let's get on with the news. So first up on 9to5 Linux, we've had a newer release of Raspberry Pi OS. So it was only a couple of weeks ago that we had the fairly major update to Raspberry Pi OS, but this update improves the detection of Bluetooth HID devices and the startup speed of LX Panel Network Controller plugins. There was a typo in Raspberry Pi Config that resulted in an empty file being created. Fixes for broken keyboard shortcuts for opening the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. Oh, I found that out in my video. Oh, only in the 64-bit image. I only, I've only used the 64-bit image. Bogus text output in Raspberry Config network configuration selection and an issue where the text entry in the searchable main menu was ignored while the caps or numlock keys were active. So the kernel's gone to 5.15.61 and it is the operating system that I base my KDE builds on and uh, so I'm pleased to get all those updates and it explains how you can update to that in here sudo apt update and and sudo apt full dash upgrade so I did a YouTube short on this uh, basically the PiCast had their 100th episode and they had Andre Costa on there who is the creator of Raspberry Pi Locator and there were some really good tips on how to get a Raspberry Pi so things like times and retailers and various different things so if you still haven't got a Pi it's worth watching that video because uh, you may learn something extra that you haven't been checking before. And I had a question, um, so on my KDE build, which I'm using at the moment, which I pretty much always use for Pi News, from Bill B, I've seen a couple of others mention keyboard local issues. I too would like a US keyboard, but even with the changes in Raspberry Pi config and the Raspberry Pi configuration, the behavior of a UK keyboard remains. I guess this could be more down to, um, because when I set this up, uh, I install Raspberry Pi OS and then, uh, so I'd always pick UK because I'm in the UK. And after I've set it up, I install KDE and make all my customization. So a long winded way around it, would be to look for my playlist on my channel, my KDE setup, so that you can do it yourself. If you don't want to do uh, my download, uh, so in this playlist I go right from the start, from Raspberry Pi OS, install KDE Plasma and all the other bits that I put on it, all the other customizations. So you could start off with Raspberry Pi OS, but tell it the region you're in, uh, and then it shouldn't have that problem. But if anybody has a simpler way of doing it, if they could let me know or let the commenter know, uh, that would be much appreciated. Hackster.io had this story, Little Bird Automate Stock Picking with Bishop, a Raspberry Pi powered Raspberry Pi picker. So as it says here, it's designed to speed selection of Raspberry Pi boards and other compact products. I don't know how many Raspberry Pis they have in stock. They probably, these are probably empty boxes. It does say other items as well. You can see there's cables and various things there. Australian electronics retailer Little Bird Electronics has made picking and shipping Raspberry Pi single board computers and other gadgets significantly more streamlined by using a Raspberry Pi to automate the process. And there's a video here as well, so let's have a quick look. Uh, I'll just scan through it. That's cool. So it's a Raspberry Pi 4B. Yeah, very nice use of a Raspberry Pi. From Tom's Hardware, Raspberry Pi Pico keyboard has OLED keycaps. You can see we've got a display here. It's all backlit. Looks very, very cool. One of the things I really like is that it's got a dial. Uh, I just think uh, for certain things, dials are much better. I always think that in a car, a volume control should be a control knob, not buttons. I'm not a big fan of buttons when you can have a dial, but I'll put a link in the description if you want to read more about it and build something like this yourself. Next from Adafruit, how to build Raspberry Pi Pico programs with no software installation. So building programs on the Raspberry Pi Pico typically require installing some software on a programming computer 
But when people arrive with a mix of Windows, Mac OS, Chrome OS and Linux laptops, often with different versions or architectures within each group, trying to guide them through the process can easily take a whole lesson and require individual attention to debug each particular problem while the other students get bored. So this uses Google's free Collab service to build a program for the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller in the browser. So you don't need any software installed on your local computer. Very impressive. So if you want to check that out, again, link will be in the description. So I remember K9, which is a robotic dog from Doctor Who in the 80s. And uh, Fitz Walker has built one, a life-size replica. And here it is from the original series. And there's a video on there as well. His iconic ears twist back and forth. A probe emerges from his forehead to detect alien life. And his antenna tail wags in all directions. And it all runs from a Raspberry Pi. Very cool. Now, I've covered this in Pi News before, DevTerm, which is uh, a portable computer. And as it says, retro-inspired. If you have a look at it, it does look cool. It's got a little mouse tracker here some dials on the side, uh, a very wide screen display. They've updated it to use the Compute Module 4, so it's gonna have quite a lot more power. Uh, but uh, yeah, just a cool looking piece of kit. Saw this guide on Medium, haven't tried it yet, uh, but I thought it looked interesting. I thought other people would wanna try it. Uh, Raspberry Pi, CCTV camera, and NVR. Now if we scroll down, there is various instructions on how you can do it. Now I did one recently, using Motion iOS, which I'm really pleased with. Uh, I use that on quite a regular basis, but uh, it's nice to have options, and we certainly have options on Raspberry Pi, apart from availability. Next, from All3DP, top 50 cool Raspberry Pi cases to 3D print in 2022. Uh, it just popped up on my feed, I don't know when the story came out, but uh, I thought anybody would be interested to see what people have come up with. See a nice one here with a fan inside, and loads of holes in the top for air circulation. We've seen lots of towers like this from various people, really nice design. Adaptable fan case. So you can do different sizes on there. So if you want a bigger fan, which can run slower and still cool us just as efficiently. Futuristic case. There's just loads in here. So I'll put a link in the description. Um, that was a very nice looking one. Uh, very inventive. Yeah, really, really impressive. I haven't really gone through all of them yet. That's huge. And uh, that looks like, looks like phono sockets. Not sure if it is. Uh, it's got some little speakers on there as well. So I'll look at that in my own time. Uh, <laughs> look at that, amazing. And thanks to Peter Savas for sending me a link to this. Uh, I can't remember if it was in an email or a comment, but uh, this is from Big Tree Tech, and they've got something that, that mimics the size of a Pi 4B. So you can see uh, the USB, if I, if I hover near it, it zooms it. Oh, we can do it this way. Look. Uh, so USB-C, the two micro HDMIs, uh, the USB sockets, and uh, the LAN socket. So it mimics the exact size of a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, but it also uses a, a different board. So obviously software isn't going to run the same. Uh, it's not all going to be the same things, but maybe things can be adapted. But I just thought it was a clever uh, way of doing things. It does also support the Compute Module 4 as well and convert it into a Pi 4. I did a video recently converting a Pi 0 2W into a Pi 4B or a Pi 3, which actually fits in a Pi 4 case. And you can see there's various configuration here. Again, I'll put links in the description. The Mini Deck from Hackster.io again. The Mini Deck is a small folding cyber deck based on the Raspberry Pi 0 2W. I really like the 0 2W. It's super powerful for its price. And you can see here lots going on with a, a almost like a sort of BlackBerry style keyboard and uh, a very tiny OLED display. But lots of description as well, which I always like to see. And sensors, connectivity and so on. So Fedora 37 Beta is available. I haven't got around to testing it. I've had loads of things to do. And uh, I do mean to do it because Fedora is a very nice operating system, including the latest GNOME 43 desktop, updated compiler, official support for Raspberry Pi 4, and there's a link in here for all the images. I've got a video showing Fedora 34, which is very nice, uh, but we're three versions on now, so it could be even better. So Raspberry Pi and Steam, not the Steam you may be thinking about, it's uh, running on a Steam-powered engine. We know how complicated it can be sorting out the power demands of your Raspberry Pi project, but this creation from maker Mike Bell takes the idea to a whole new level. Using a small steam-powered engine, he's managed to power Raspberry Pi Pico along with a few accessories. It takes approximately two to three minutes to get the water boiling in the steam engine. Once everything is hot and ready, the Pico can run for around 12 minutes before the water in the boiler dissipates. It's not very practical, but I love it. 
Portable Raspberry Pi tricorder detects Starlink satellites. Now I, I'd heard of Starlink satellites, but I first noticed them back in the summer. We went to a friend's house and we were, they've got a field and we were out, um, you know, having a meal and stuff in this field, looking at the sky. It was in quite a rural area. You could see the Starlink satellites going across the sky. So they look like stars, but they move across the sky. Have a look on a clear night, go out, look at the sky, and look for, for stars that are moving. Not shooting stars, but just moving faster than a plane, but not flashing at all, and they're Starlink satellites. And this tricorder can track them. Uh, you can see it's uh, an interesting looking bunch of wires in there, but, uh, but obviously very impressive. We've got this uh, detector on the side. And uh, let's finish off with some Facebook stories. Uh, so from Raspberry Pi and DIY Projects, Corey Whitesell, I shared this on another group also. I turned a non-working retro laptop into a Pi 4B laptop without damaging the original. I made use of the existing power supply and keyboard, replaced the display with a 9.7 inch that was the exact viewable area as the opening. And you can see, so it's got a nice keyboard on it. Very Amiga looking, but I guess everything, oh, NEC look. Uh, everything was uh, back in those days, everything was cream. But uh, yeah, really impressive that it's, uh, it's not destroyed anything in there and everything is still working as it should be. So that's a, a display board it looks like. There's the LED screen, Pi 4. Didn't look simple, did it? Look at all those connections on the back, like loads of things that we no, no longer use. Oh, and uh, uh, if we go back, uh, USB 3 sockets are here as well, look, which obviously wouldn't have been there back in the day. And it closes up. It's pretty much a laptop. I wonder if he's tried to get the floppy drive support. Yeah, love it, brilliant. Also had this from Facebook. Uh, getting sound out of the Raspberry Pi Zero through GPIO's PWM pin using some basic electronic components found in any starter kit. We've got audio here. Let's turn on Battery, my speaker. 90%. Oh, I probably can't play that. <laughs> I'll get a strike. Uh, a bit of Nintendo music. And uh, another really nice case from Michael Clements. Looks very cool in acrylic, so completely see-through. Uh, got the Ice Tower cooler in there. Yeah. Lovely. And he's asked for any suggestions for improvements. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.